There's a significant difference in mining profitability depending on what mining software you run on your GPU rigs and it's not related to the hash rate that you can read in the mining software, so let me explain. Warning, there are people pretending to be me in the comments and on social platforms. I'll never ask you to add me on WhatsApp or Telegram and I'll never ask you to send me money, crypto or your personal information. Alright, so please be careful, use your common sense and don't let any of these imposters fool you. Alright, now back to the video. Hey, how's it going GPU heads? Thanks for clicking on my video. Seb Heslo here and in this video I'm going to show you a comparison between all the most commonly used miners like T-Rex, LOL Miner and NB Miner because there's actually a significant difference in how much Ethereum they will mine on your GPU rigs and most importantly there's actually a clear winner for which one is the best so that's what's coming up in this video but first a quick word from our sponsor. Wadom. If you want to get into proper Bitcoin mining, then Wadom has you covered. From the latest ASIC miners, mobile mining containers and power transformers, to complete hosting services and even full facility build-outs. Wadom is the largest distributor of Bitcoin mining equipment in the United States, with a team of over 100 mining experts ready to help you out. So check them out through wadom.io forward slash seb or in the link in the video description. Alright, so before we have a look at the results, there is something we need to know about mining and that is that while mining, your mining software will report your performance or hash rate as mega hash per second for Ethereum. But in mining, we're not paid for our hash rate, but rather for the amount of shares that we successfully send to the pool. So you have your reported hash rate, which is the hash rate that you see within your mining software. You then have your effective hash rate or your current hash rate, which is the real world hash rate for how fast you're actually submitting shares to the pool. However, since mining is kind of random and to some extent luck based, this hash rate can vary up and down quite a bit since you might find a bunch of chairs really quickly and then nothing for a while. And that is why on the pool your hash rate might look more somewhat like this rather than being just a straight line. And because of this the third and probably most relevant way of measuring hash rate is the average hash rate. And the average hash rate takes your current hash rate or effective hash rate and as the name implies calculates an average based on that. So as miners what we actually want is as high of an average hash rate as possible since that is based on the actual amount of shares that we submit to the pool. And as you'll be able to see in just a little bit the average hash rate based on the amount of shares submitted to the pool can actually vary greatly from the reported hash rate within your mining software. So I was gonna test the average hash rate based on submitted shares versus the reported hash rate in the software and compared the two for all of the you know biggest mining software that people use but I actually don't have to do that because there is actually a fantastic resource online where they have done exactly that test and they've gone way more in depth and are have been a lot more thorough than I would have been able to be myself and you can find this test yourself on the website hashrate.no and what they have done is they have tested a bunch of different mining rigs and they have submitted at least 1 million shares per mining software and rig and then compared the average hash rate based on the submitted shares versus the reported hash rate in the mining software. So without further ado let's have a look at their results. So this is the website here and I think the main sort of reason for this website is to find good sort of starting overclock settings that you can then tweak to uh, you know match your GPU even better but if you go up here to their uh, little menu item called tests you can see here that they have done this exact test that I've been talking about. So they have done it for a NVIDIA Turing rig, a NVIDIA Ampere non-LHR rig, an NVIDIA Ampere LHR rig, and a AMD Big Navi RDNA 2 rig. So let's just have a quick look through all of them here. So if we start with the Turing rig, you can see it's a rig of 12 1660 supers. You can see their overclock settings here. And then basically what they have here is a list of the three miners that they tested for this one. And then you can see what the development fee is, the reported hash rate within the mining software, and then the average hash rate based on what they actually saw uh, in terms of submitted shares. And then the deviation is basically how much is the mining software under or over reporting the hash rate. So as you can see here, if we look at the reported hash rate within the mining software, uh, T-Rex actually reported the highest hash rate at 355.47 megahash. However, 
pool side, which is what actually matters in terms of submitted shares, uh, Lol Miner actually had the highest real hash rate at 349 mega hash uh, or just above. So as you can see there, T-Rex Miner actually reported about 1% higher hash rate than it actually got versus the, you know, Lol Miner, which reported only 0.1% higher than what it actually got. And not only that, the Lol Miner development fee is also lower than the T-Rex one. More about that in just a little bit. But let's have a look at the other tests here. So we have the non-LHR test, which is a rig of 83070s. You can see the overclock settings there. And again, you can see Lol Miner reported and average is very close to the same with a deviation of just 0.01 percentage while you can see the other hash rates here they are quite different um, g minor for example you have one percent lower actual hash rate than um, reported by the software and we can see here team black miner actually coming in dead last both in terms of how much it over reports the hash rate within the mining software, but also in terms of just how much actual real hash rate you are getting. Because if we look at this in Team Black Miner, it looks like we are getting way more hash rates. It seems like it's the best miner, but actually based on the amount of real hash rate we get, it is the worst miner. So, you know, this actually makes quite a big difference there. You can see if you were using Team Black Miner thinking you were getting 507 mega hash, but you're actually only getting 470 mega hash, that's like a 37 mega hash difference in what you think you're getting versus what you're actually getting, which is very significant in my mind. So let's speed through the other tests here real quick. We have the LHR test, which again, lol miner on top the real world hash rate 478 mega hash you can see the other ones here uh, they also had two uh, mining software here that they couldn't get to work um yeah and not only is lol miner uh, the best ha real hash rate it is also the one with the you know least deviation or the one that actually doesn't lie about your hash rate would be another way of putting it right and finally let's have a look at amd cards and as you can see here, that this is the rig. Um, seems like one of each, which is a cool rig to have. And then again, you can see the highest hash rate was with LOL Miner. Once again, uh, you then have Team Red Miner. And I think they've made a little bit of a typing mistake here. I think this should be negative 0.18% because as you can see, the reported is higher than the average there for Team Red Miner. So not only is LOL Miner getting the actual highest, you know, real world hash rate, it is also the one with the, you know, lowest deviation again. So there is one more thing to consider, and that is, of course, the development fee for these different mining software. And the way the development fee works for these is that for a certain amount of time each day, the mining software will point your hash rate to the developer's, you know, Ethereum wallet rather than your own. And this is usually done for about 1% of the time, but it does differ uh, between the different mining software. And so this is the way that the mining software developers, you know, get paid for the time they put into the work they do, you know, developing these softwares, right? So I've made a little spreadsheet here that takes into account both the, you know, actual real world hash rate as well as the development fee. So let's have a look. So I based this spreadsheet on their 8x3070 rig, the non-LHR one. And what I've done is I've just taken all of the mining software they tested here. Uh, I've got the development fee. I have the actual pool side hash rate based on the submitted shares. So the real hash rate you would actually get. And as you can see there, we have LOL Miner on top with 483 mega hash and Team Black Miner at the very bottom of 469, just, just about 470 mega hash, right? But does the difference in dev fee make up for the, you know, hash rate difference? So let's have a look. So if we look at the sort of real hash rate, if you, you know, take out the development fee, so that would be this hash rate minus this percentage, basically. So after um, the dev fee for LOL Miner, for example, we end up with 480 mega hash, more or less. Um, and as you can see for Team Black Miner, still not looking very good at just 467.6 mega hash. 
And so you can see the calculation for how I'm doing that is basically just the hash rate and then I take out the hash rate multiplied by the percentage. And that's how we end up with the, you know, hash rate minus the dev fee, right? So in terms of ETH yields based on, you know, the mining yield as of today, uh, which is about 0 0.0151 Ethereum per day per gigahash. One year mining with each of these mining software. Uh, you can see how much we're getting there. For the best one, which is LOL Miner, we get 2.6458 Ethereum in one year. Now, of course, mining yield go up and down all the time and Ethereum mining is probably gonna go into proof of stake before a year, but this is just to demonstrate sort of the actual real world difference here, right? So as you can see there, um, for Team Black Miner, we're only at 2.5773 um, in terms of mining yield, right? So let's say you mine on this, this is just a hypothetical scenario now, right? So let's say you mine Ethereum for a year, mining yield stays perfectly still at what is exactly right now. So in a vacuum, that means you would get this much Ethereum within a year. And then let's say you hold that Ethereum up until the next bull run and the next time Ethereum hits an all time high, uh, which would be roughly at around $5,000. Now, I like to portray mining and profitability in this way because I believe that is the better and smarter way of, you know, calculating your mining profits, not based on whatever Ethereum is, you know, per coin in terms of price today, but in terms of what you would like to sell your coin for in the future. Uh, I'm a strong believer in holding your coin until the price hits a price where you're comfortable selling it. So for this experiment, I'm choosing $5,000. I'm sure some of you will think that's absurd. Go ahead and complain about it in the comments as I'm sure you would have anyway. But as we can see here, that means that for you just using LOL Miner rather than Team Black Miner, you would have made an extra $350 or something like that in a year just by using a different mining software. So it's essentially free money, right? And I've also just calculated the profitability uh, as a percentage here. So you can see the actual deviation there. If that's something interesting to you, you can see LOL Miner is at 100% because that was the most profitable. And then you can see, you know, G Miner is just about there, just 0.08% less. Uh, so pretty much the same in terms of profitability. You then have, what do we have? Phoenix Miner then T-Rex Miner, then NB Miner, and finally in very last place, we have Team Black Miner. So, as you can see, many of you will be able to increase your mining profitability by at least half a percentage or maybe even more just by switching over your mining software, which is you know completely free and takes like a couple of minutes. So in my mind, that is a complete no-brainer and I will be switching over all of my rigs to LOL Miner. But that's it. If you found this video helpful, then please give it one of these. And if you really liked it, you can now join the channel to help support what I do here. It really does make a big difference and it means a lot to me, so thank you. But what you gotta do now is you gotta click on that next video on the screen. Because this video is over, you can also click the picture on my face to subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate that. But yeah, go click on that next video and I'll see you there. Goodbye. Goodbye, bye-bye.